Now we look at uh, section 7.4 and its chemical reactions. And there are two types of chemical reactions that are of importance to an esthetician. And the reason for that is because they explain how skincare products work. And in the skincare product lines and their uh, use, uh, uses in fact, or is based on these two types of chemical reaction. First one is acid alkali neutralization reactions. Then second one is oxidation reduction reactions. Couple of things you'll notice in both of these cases, you have acid on one side and then you have oxidation. And then the other thing is that you have alkali and reduction. So these two, uh, for example, acid works against uh, a base or an alkali and or alkali works against an acid in the same relationship that is down here in the oxidation and reduction so oxidation uh, will uh, either do a number of things add oxygen or remove hydrogen or it will uh, remove an electron and reduction will actually add an uh, electron into the system. So they kind of work as a balancing system. So think about uh, both of these things as a, a balance. So you have a balance of acid versus alkali or alkali versus acid. Then you have a, a balance of oxidation against reduction and reduction definitely against oxidation. And we'll get to see more of examples of this and how they uh, work in that uh, balancing act. Okay. Now, uh, so again, just a re uh, re uh, review, we have the acid alkali neutralization reactions. And then the second one is oxidation reduction reactions. So first of all, the, uh, alkali or acid alkali neutralization we have acids that will do what uh, neutralize alkali and then we have alkali or which is bases will uh, neutralize an acid and the purpose of this is what we might call homeostasis or a balancing act and if it, something becomes too uh, basic or too alkali towards moves towards the pH, uh, which is it goes up uh, for that, then the acid will bring it down. Or let's say if it uh, the pH is dropping, I uh, think environment is becoming too acidic, then alkali will bring it up. And we saw that in a previous slide, and I'm gonna bring that slide up now. And that is in uh, section 7-3. And we saw a pH scale. And in this pH scale, we have acid, which is lower than 7, the neutral area. And then alkali, which is above. The numbers increase, indicating that uh, the environment is more alkali. And this is your pH scale. And seven is your neutral area, which is very close to water. And that's where the word distilled water's pH resides. Well, our target as an esthetician is around the acid mantle, which is around 5.5. Five. So uh, we are uh, attempting to keep that acid mental as, a, as this pr uh, previous slide said and keep our protective barrier f uh, working and uh, so our pH we do not want to go uh, to shift too far away from this environment here and so uh, what what happens is acid works against alkali or alkali works against an acid and the idea is to keep the environment uh, there and so this what we see is almost like a tug of war uh, that uh, alkali is pulling uh, the numbers this way 
and acid is pulling it in the opposite direction. And the process is called, even though we may be targeting a specific pH, we're still calling it the process of neutralization. So going back, we see acid alkali neutralization. But again, while we're thinking about neutralizing, we, uh, on one sense, we could be talking about pH 7, saying, hey, that's the neutral pH. But our target, even though we're talking about neutralization, is the, the acid mantle's pH, which is 5.5. Second thing that uh, we are going to be looking at is the oxidation reduction reactions. Again, uh, just but coming back to uh, acid alkali neutralization uh, reactions, they occur when an acid is mixed with alkali. And this just begins to, uh, this chart or this reading just begins to give a little more, more of an example. Now that we have understood the concept, let's just explore a little further. And it says occurs when an acid is mixed with an alkali also called a base. So an alkali is also called a base. So we use those terminology back and forth. And is uh, and the concept is in equal proportions to neutralize each other and form water and a salt. If we put acid, the uh, strength of an acid very close to the very str strength of an alkali, they are going to neutralize themselves perfectly. And we saw that in our scale, what the concept uh, is displayed here. And uh, let me. So this one, if we have a perfect, let's say we have a, uh, a P, uh, an acid environment of six, let's say the pH is six and that's an acid. Uh, acidic environment and then we have something that's uh, the alkali of eight and we combine the two it's going to come directly in the center and make itself neutralized and when it's neutralized what well, what do we get we definitely get water and some form of salt okay we'll see an example there so i uh, Another, but let's look at the numbers first. Let's say we have a, uh, uh, just take random right here, 9.5, let's say is our pH. And that is a very, very uh, uh, basic or alkaline, alkaline environment. And we want to neutralize that. What do we do? We need something that is going to be then, uh, let's see, one, two and a half. So we go to one, two and a half. So we're going to need something that is uh, 4.5 of pH. So the acid that we're going to take is of strength at 4.5 and add that and then it will shift everything uh, in this direction. And that's going to become uh, neutral as water. Let's take a look at an example of uh, our target goal will be, let's say if we're trying to protect our acid mantle and it's at 5.5 and suddenly our, uh, we overly wash our face or something happens and uh, we are uh, just hanging around in the, in the pool and too much water and let's just say somehow our uh, uh, acid mantle goes to 7. And so we have seven. Now we need to, or I'm sorry, seven. Cross that out. Let's just say we get to seven. And that is not uh, where we want to be. We want to be back at 5.5. So the question then becomes, what kind of acidic uh, acid uh, do we need to neutralize that or bring that into the environment of um, 5.5. So we've gone, uh, let's see, one and one and a half. So we moved half and one. So we need something that's close to four. So pH of four. 
if we add these two in equal uh, add this and uh, in equal strength to this seven then it'll be it'll come down to five point five but again that's not it's not that we start throwing acid on our face we do not want to do that uh, there's a better approach to it and that better approach it was something we talked about earlier and those are called buffering agents buffering agents and uh, uh, companies do put that buffering agent in that and what they do is they manage this type of uh, uh, conditions what when the uh, the solution or the environment let's say we apply something topical and our skin is too acidic it will bring it that same buffering solution that buffering agent that specific buffering agent will balance it out if it encounters an acidic environment then uh, it will then bring that uh, up uh, to the proper P, uh, pH that we want, which is around 5.5. And if we, something is too alkaline, uh, let's see, A-L-K-A-L-I-N-E, alkaline, and then it will uh, tone it down to a pH close to 5.5. So buffering agents do that, the same buffering. We don't need different, different buffers. We need the same buffer. We'll, we'll do that. It it's a built-in chemistry of that buffering agent that will respond both to an acid and an alkaline environment. And so it's important to understand that. And that's where we uh, begin to understand this is that, yes, in this example, what we are saying is uh, the... Uh, P, uh, the uh, acid and uh, the base or the acid and the alkali is in equal proportions. And what happens? They neutralize uh, to the extent of a pH 7, which is water. But an a salt will form as well. And the example that they give is they say hydrochloric acid. And we what do we see? Hydrogen. We see chloride in here. And then on the opposite, that, that's our acid. And then we have our base, which is sodium hydroxide, sodium OH group to it. So we have a sodium and then we have an hydroxide, uh, 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 yes, a hydroxide uh, 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 portion of that. And then uh, we have, what it forms is if we put that HC. L, this is a little L, plus sodium hydroxide, and they react, what do we get? Well, the hydrogen will go to the OH, sodium will come to the chloride, and so what do we get? Sodium, uh, sodium chloride, and then the HOH becomes h 2 Oh, and this is water, and this is our table salt, sodium chloride. And so this is uh, th that concept. It's not always sodium chloride. There's m a number of other salts in the chemistry field. Um, and so, uh, but we do get that kind of salty, salt uh, formation as well, and then water. So these, that's just an example. <clears throat> there are some uh, images from the internet that we do have. Uh, we did talk about acid can be measured using a litmus paper, and we have a blue litmus paper. And this blue litmus paper, uh, when we put it into the acid, uh, turns uh, on the reddish side. And then we do have, we also can uh, get uh, blue litmus paper. And what, what do we see that that blue litmus paper in the base environment becomes uh, purplish or uh, I'm sorry, the red um, P, uh, red litmus paper becomes uh, bluish in color. So that's that's a way of measuring our 
acid and base. But again, the concept is acids will go against bases or kind of, uh, and there's a tug of war. I, mean, I should draw the, actually the arrow in, in this way. Acid will pull it in this uh, direction and base will pull it in this direction. And there's a tug of war that happens and the adjustment of the pH, the resultant pH happens here. And uh, but what really does that again, I want to emphasize is not that we're throwing acids and bases on our faces and our skin. No, we use again buffering, uh, buffering uh, agents. Very, very uh, important because buffering agents are specific chemi chemicals and they have the properties of maintaining, not just uh, uh, drastically changing, but managing it uh, slowly and adjusting it in, in the right amount. And they work in contrast to uh, the, the uh, proposed, uh, or I mean, the, what, whatever they encounter. Uh, the either acidic environment or a uh, basic environment on our skin, the buffering agents will then uh, shift in that direction. Very important to understand. And this is again the acid base reaction, uh, the process of neutralization. A second thing we get into is oxidation reduction. And while we are talking about oxidation reduction, we are also going to be talking about uh, a, re, uh, a process called redox. And uh, we will talk about redox. And uh, what that is, the redox is the reduction happening at the same time that the oxidation is happening. And in this, we are all going to also take talk about oxidation happening by itself. And we are also going to talk about reduction happening by itself. And both of these are just like the acid based concepts, oxidation and reduction, very significant in our skin. Another aspect of oxidation that we do want to talk about is uh, combustion. Well, that is not a huge, we know that that's related to uh, fire. If I can draw a fire here or an explosion, uh, that, that is a very quick uh, form of fire. It's a very quick reaction. If it's happening uh, slowly, it's a fire. If it's happening very, very fast, then we know it's an explosion. Uh, but that does not, uh, that is not too significant as an esthetician. We're not talking about fires on our skins and uh, on our bodies or explosions. <laughs> and so, uh, but it's important to understand that what oxidation in our, in order to understand how oxygen works, it's good to also take a look at, uh, combustion. And we know that, uh, the oxygen will combine with, uh, some form of carbons and the carbon chain, and then it will uh, react very quickly in that. So that's why our, the oxidation concept comes in. And but let's moving back to our lesson that is uh, that is outlined here. Let's take a look at the concept of reduction and oxidation, and combining that, we get the word. Somebody came up with it word redox and the idea of redox is that oxidation is be and reduction are happening at the same time so while uh, let's take uh, two chemicals let's take the chemical a and chemical b and so let's call this one the oxidizer Oxidizer is going to then oxidize the compound B. And uh, the compound B in turn, in turn, will, will, what will have done, it will have reduced the compound A. So while oxidize, oxidization, is, oxidation is happening in this direction, 
reduction is happening in the opposite direction. It's a give and take balance. And so while that's happening at the same time, somebody says, hey, we constantly keep looking at oxidation reduction happening, just like acid alkali concept happening. Uh, and while that's going on, why don't we not come up with a word for that? And they called it redox. It's just a short, uh, it's just a acronym or a, a combination of that. So also, this is all oxidation reduction is also known as redox. It is a chemical reaction in which the oxidizing agent is reduced. So what did we see? A is oxidizing, but it's also getting reduced in the process uh, by the very compound that it's oxidizing. So A is oxidizing B, B is oxidizing, a B is reducing A. So kind of play that in your mind and uh, the oxidizing agent is reduced and the reducing agent is oxidized so that there's a and b concepts happening at the same time and what is that called redox so that if somebody said what is redox redox is oxidation reduction where one is the oxidation and reduction process is happening at the same time in other words if A is oxidizing, A is also getting reduced. An oxidizing agent is a substance that releases oxygen. So this is important to say, okay, what is oxidizing agent? There are a number of ways of taking a look at this. Let me draw that out for you. Oxidizing agent, uh, the primary concept to get uh, is that it releases oxygen it contributes an oxygen so what is oxygen uh, doing the oxygen sometimes while we think of oxygen as something we breathe it is also a, a kind of what we might call a culprit in, in the, i'm drawing this as a uh, as a a compound or a molecule uh, like say let's say in a water scenario and it, so we have these bonds but the oxygen is kind of a culprit it's a very strong uh, in, uh, agent that will oxidize things and what will the word oxi oxidizing means that uh, it can uh, bond with stuff very rapidly and oxygen loves to uh, mess with the protons, which are hydrogen. And what does it do from these hydrogens? It robs them of electrons. So it's a electron stealing uh, agent. So we can think of it as a culprit. And why do we think of it as a culprit? Because oxidation in our bodies can be very, very damaging. And for that very purpose, uh, when we th think about oxidizing agents, we think of them as, yes, we think of them that release oxygen because oxygen is going to do one thing. It's going to bond with stuff very rapidly. And we know that it bonds with our, uh, uh, the um, iron in our blood system and and does help the body yes we love oxygen in our body we need that but it can also become an oxidizing agent where it starts to steal electron and break down things and we will talk about free radicals in uh, next few slides as well so how do we think about oxidizing agent it's a substance that releases oxygen and oxygen is going to do a number of things. There's another way of thinking about the uh, oxidizing agent. Something that's oxidizing agent also removes removes hydrogen. Why does it remove hydrogen? Because hydrogen is a very small molecule, and it's easy to rob it, uh, sell, uh, rob it. Uh, rob from this hydrogen an electron it just has one electron in it and it's already a bit of unstable uh, electron and so oxygen will come and say hey give that to me 
and will uh, then run off with it or and the proton runs after it and that's where the concept of uh, when we talk about H2O there's actually two hydrogen saying hey you're taking my electron and and uh, it, it, even though uh, the oxygen has these co electrons running around a free electrons it's still saying hey I want those electrons and so think about it as an electron in the uh, in as a free radical and then also removing hydrogen so that concepts uh, those concepts are significant here so we do have that oxidizing agent and then reduction is the subtraction of oxygen and so while this is releasing oxygen oxygen is coming in a reduction is the subtraction of oxygen or the addition of hydrogen and we just sort of played that out uh, that uh, roll out we have an oxygen that loves to steal electrons and where does it love to steal electrons from hydrogens are the easiest one so that concept comes in think about it in in those uh, term and this oxidizing agent and reduction happening at the same time uh, is what the chemical reaction is called redox reaction a lot to a lot to take in at this point but if you kind of think about it draw it out think about a a, a, a robber or a, a, a coming out you know there's an agent who says hey um, go out and tells the oxygen go steal me some electrons from hydrogen and uh, uh, so those types of things uh, if you play that out in your mind things begin to at least make some sense uh, all right let's go move further with this uh, okay so here is uh, an example that is given in a a practical scenario uh, for a butitioner because it says hydrogen peroxide is an example of oxidizing agent hydrogen peroxide can be thought of as water with an extra atom of oxygen there's that oxygen that's going to uh, do some uh, activity for us and this will be we can use it in a, a beneficial way because when hydrogen peroxide is mixed with hair color or facial bleaching cream or brow tinting what happens oxygen is added or oxygen is released and when oxygen is added that's called oxidase oxidation and so it is uh and then once oxygen is added uh, to the preparation and thus it becomes oxidized so when we in this scenario how do we think about this oxygen is doing what it's oxidizing the hair color it's oxidizing the facial bleaching cream or the brow tint uh, compound that we uh, are adding it to and so peroxide gets it going in that in that way uh, think about also uh, oxidation happening to a uh, silver we see that there's a kind of darkening happening so oxidation is uh, uh, visible in those uh, pers perspectives but think about when it does that to the hair color and is is needed for it to become activated then at the same time oxygen is subtracted from the hydrogen peroxide so hydrogen peroxide loses that uh, oxygen and so what happens to the hydrogen peroxide it is reduced and the hydrogen peroxide is reduced why because it lost lost its uh, oxygen so in this example the hair color the facial bleach or the brow tint is the reducing agent so and that concept again of ox one uh, while the uh, peroxide is oxidizing it's at the same time becoming reduced 
And so oxidation and reduction happening simultaneously. And what do we call that? Redox. So, and here's a little bit of a drawing to show that very example. Uh, red can uh, color it needs uh, peroxide. Well, this is uh, this is not this should be Redken product, uh, not uh, you don't mix this. But for our purposes here, let's just uh, why I like this picture is because it shows you three percent, six percent, nine percent, ten point five, twelve percent, based on the volume. And uh, what is those percentage? Is the percent of per, uh, peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, that is in the these solutions? So this should be uh, Redken. Let's just pretend it is Redken. And so we have the color here that needs to be oxidized. So we use peroxide based on how much oxidation we want to do and how readily, how fast do we want that oxidation to happen. So uh, the chemical equation here shows that we have the hydrogen peroxide. It's sort of like water plus additional ox oxygen here. And so what and we add color to that or the color agent and then we this oxygen will come and will uh, attach itself to the color and in this process in this very process a hydrogen will be kicked off and oxygen will uh, attach itself to the color and then in that we see that the color what we call is now oxidized and what's left is the water molecule in the peroxide and that's what we were uh, looking at uh, earlier uh, so hydrogen peroxide is reduced and in this case what happens to hydrogen peroxide it gets reduced and the color becomes oxidized Redox reactions are always an exchange and that's where we are talking about because it's an oxidation reduction happening at the same time. When a substance is oxidized, the oxidizer is always reduced. A reduction is the subtraction of oxygen or the addition of hydrogen. And so that's what reduction is. And so what is oxidation? Oxidation then, let's, let me write that down. Oxidation is the addition addition of uh, oxygen. O, X, Y, G, oxygen. And uh, it is the subtraction subtraction of hydrogen it is either subtraction or removal of hydrogen and the addition of oxygen think about it in, in that term and so uh, in, in contrast to that what is reduction? Reduction is subtraction of oxygen, where this one is addition of oxygen, or the addition of hydrogen. Here we have subtraction of hydrogen. Also play that in your uh, thought process. Look at the, these opposites that are happening. Oxidation can be thought of as addition of oxygen, but at the same time subtraction of hydrogen. Because when you oxygen comes in it takes the electrons away from the hydrogen and says go on your way get out of here but the hydrogen will then either kind of keep chasing the oxygen around and so you do get that h2o concepts but uh but you are removing that hydrogen and uh removing the yeah removing the hydrogen and so that's that concept is there think about that and then uh, 
you know, reflect that on the concept of reduction is subtraction of oxygen and the addition of hydrogen. And this becomes important when we look at the next slide. Okay, and so the, the book does tell us that oxidation reactions can, uh, can take place without oxygen. Uh, oxygen is all, not always needed. And how do we look at it without oxygen? Because we're looking at it in terms of hydrogen. And that's why in our previous slide, we talked about, let's just reflect on that, is that oxidation is the subtraction of hydrogen and reduction is addition of hydrogen right here. And so think of it, if you take out the concept of oxygen, it is uh, also, you can think about it in terms of hydrogen. Both of these concepts, uh, the oxidation reduction really revolves so much around oxygen and hydrogen that uh, it's, uh, you know, while there are other substances that are kind of playing the same game of oxidation and reduction, uh, the concept of oxygen and hydrogen yeah, is the compounds or the, the elements of oxygen and hydrogen are really the, the key examples of oxidation reduction. And that's where this key, uh, this uh, slide is telling us that oxidation reduction can take place without the oxygen. What it's saying is you can think about it as an oxy, uh, using oxygen or not think about it as an oxygen. Uh, just take that out of your mind for now and think about it in terms of hydrogen. And so oxidation can occur when hydrogen is subtracted from a substance. And so, and that's where we uh, talk about subtraction of hydrogen and oxidation. And so uh, oxidation can also occur when hydrogen is subtracted from a substance. This oxidation is the result of either the addition of oxygen or the subtraction of hydrogen. So, I, so oxygen, uh, oxidation is subtraction of hydrogen or addition of oxygen. In the same way, a reduction is the addition of hydrogen or loss of oxygen as well and uh, and then they give the example the desired chemical changes created by processing of hair colors facial bleaching creams or brown tinting products would not be possible without an oxidation reduction or redox reaction and that's just a, a sideline uh, comment uh, we know that uh, the, these uh, redox reactions are very very important in the tinting processes and uh, brow tinting or uh, bleach creams, uh, heavy duty reaction of oxidation reduction uh, that happens uh, there. <clears throat> but here's another concept that is brought out by oxidizers or oxidizing agent. And that, uh, that concept is called free radicals. What are free radicals? And those are, uh, can be very damaging in our skin. And those are, it says right here, free radicals, unstable molecules that cause inflammation, disease, and biochemical aging in the body, especially wrinkling and sagging of the skin. Free radicals are what? Are uh, heavy duty oxidizers. And that's what it says. Free radicals are super oxidizer that cause an oxidation reaction and produce a new free radical in the process that are created by highly reactive atoms or molecules and often oxygen. What is this free radical that causes this level of damage in our body? First of all, uh, the concept is that the free radicals are super, I should say super duper oxidizers. Look at this, the oxidization, oxidation that happens here and, and the concept of oxidize to combine or cause a substance to combine with oxygen. We have metal here. Our bodies are not made of metal. They're biological, but 
if this kind of level of damage can happen uh, by an oxidizer, which is in this case is a water H uh, there's oxygen in there. Uh, I mean, so this should be in hydrogen. This is rain water coming down, but look at what happens with the oxygen that comes down and oxidizes. And this, if this rust is happening here, and we have seen that in the past. This is uh, metal is Fe. Uh, that's the element Fe. You add oxygen to it, uh, and we can do that in H to uh, write it backwards. Um, but if this combines with this, what we get is uh, FeO2, and that is what is rust right here ferric oxide and so this is an uh, oxi oxidization happening of the metal imagine the same level of damage happening within our bodies fortunately uh, it's not crazy amount but it does impact the whole body and we do have antioxidants that come in and neutralize this process as well but what are free radicals? They're super oxidizer that cause an oxidation reaction uh, in our body. Then it says right here, a new free radical uh, is created in the process. What this is, is a chain reaction uh, that uh, gets started. Chain reaction. Is that where one, uh, one oxidizer what it will do is, uh, let's say oxygen comes in, it will steal an electron from somebody and cause instability. And that uh, molecule, so let's say an A, uh, B, C, you have three molecules. A will steal an electron from B. B becomes uh, very unstable at that point then it will look to attack somewhere else and finds the next neighbor and starts to see steal electron from there as well and then c will go to d and d will go to e in other words the whole community is uh, uh is uh, becomes a thieves of uh, stealing from one another and the chain reaction starts and so we're gonna we're let, let's see and so there's a, uh, inter a video uh, on an internet that I found, or not video, a, an image. And what we see is free radical that comes in. And, uh, well, I should look at this one first, that the free radical, what it's doing is stealing, it's in, almost demanding from, uh, so let, if we call this A and call this B and call this C, so what, what we're saying is A comes in as a free radical, steals an electron uh, from B, then B gets unstable and then says, okay, what, where do I get my electron? And we'll go uh, to C and we'll look at it from another place. And so now a chain reaction begins to happen. But this on the top image, this top image, there's a solution. A free radical is really mean, takes a, an electron from a healthy atom and now has uh, caused instability. Afterwards, this becomes very, very sad and maybe some tears start to come out. But an antioxidant will come in and say, hey, don't steal. I'll provide an electron for you. And there's plenty of uh, electrons that an antioxidant has in its possession and will then uh, keep this guy happy and says, okay, fine, uh, as long as I keep getting fed and we'll nullify it. We'll nullify the, the its reactiveness in that way. Okay, so, and this is where it talks about antioxidants. Uh, as estheticians, we learn about the process of oxidation by using antioxidants in skin 
a care product. Antioxidants are used to stabilize skin care products by what? Preventing oxidation that would otherwise cause a product to turn rancid and decompose. So what uh, uh, the what we know is that once you uh, this is this is not talking about our biological in our body. We're talking about within the tube itself. Once we open the tube, you know, what what are we, what are we introducing? We are introducing oxygen, the environmental oxygen. So we're, when we expose our solutions or our uh, lotions to the environment, uh, oxidation, oxygen is there, will come in and ruin our product and will make turn it rancid. And the word rancid, I had to look it up, is it's smelling or tasting unpleasant as a result of becoming old and stale. So it could really ruin our uh, uh, products that are sitting on our shelves because we use them once and then they go bad. Well, to, to prevent that, antioxidants are used in there, uh, used to st as stabilizers and saying and preventing oxidation from happening. Then within our own body, uh, they, uh, their, uh, their vitamins A, C, and E, which can be applied topically in products or taken internally to increase uh, healthy body functions as well. So uh, these are antioxidants uh, within our, uh, that we can take in as well for our body. So it's kind of did a little, uh, a little mix up here on uh, in, in the writing, they should have clarified that, hey, we're going to be talking about our biological uh, our, uh, conditions here. So we take vitamins for, for our bodies, but antioxidants can also be put into product lines as well uh, to prevent from oxidation happening and uh, ruining our products or our bodies as well. So. Uh, concept is that oxidation is uh, quite a significant uh, thing. Now, it can be damaging within product lines in our bodies, but also can be beneficial because we use them in hair care products where we are, uh, we do need oxidation reduction to happen and redox reactions to happen for uh, in order to activate, activate a uh, particular uh, color, um, that we're going to be applying to our hair. Then we look at uh, antioxidants prevent oxidation by neutralizing free radicals. And that's something that we just saw. Free radicals are super oxidizers that cause an oxidation reaction and produce a new free radical in the process. And we did talk about... Um, uh, earlier talked about a chain reaction and that's where the new free radical is uh, this uh, paragraph talks about because they are created by highly reactive atoms or molecules often oxygen so the oxygen is a, a quite a crazy free radical and uh, super oxidizer free radicals are unstable if left alone they will create inflammation, damage, D, uh, damage DNA, and eventually cause disease and death. So serious uh, level damage can uh, happen from oxidizers, but we do have antioxidants within our own body. We can add, take additional ones and through vitamins as well. One free radical, uh, one free radical can oxidize or combine or cause a substance to, to combine with oxygen and millions of other substances so uh, it can uh, uh, can oxidize millions of other substances well basically uh, what it's saying is that because of chain reaction all it takes is one and it can begin a, a process of uh, messing with number of other chemicals as well antioxidants are free radical scavengers that stop the oxidation reaction from continuing so when we take antioxidants they will then uh, 
uh, look for those uh, free radicals and will uh, say, hey, talk to them, say, hey, I know you're looking for uh, electrons. I will give those. Stop your craziness. All right. Uh, last thing we want to talk about um, is the uh, concept of combustion. Combustion is another form of oxidation that is happening. And uh, we did talk about oxidation. This is an earlier slide. We did do talk about oxidation happening uh, as uh, reacting with some kind of compound. But when it's reacting with carbon, In, in this case, we see carbon in the wood. And uh, when uh, this reaction is happening, the oxygen comes in. So oxygen uh, combined with carbon. What we see at that point is there's heat. And it does take initial heat to get this uh, reaction going. But once it does, the chain reaction is so much that flames begin to we can see visible light coming out the reactions are so f uh, enormous and if this happens very very rapidly in an environment then um this type of uh, can become an explosive explosive reaction as well and uh, so oxidation doesn't have uh, necessarily have to have necessarily have to happen with carbon uh, I did have a professor who said hey I'm gonna make some water and uh, and and he knew that it was gonna result in an explosion so he kept all the students safe but it was to demonstrate that you can't just take chemical concepts and think that hey you're a huge chemist and you're gonna make some great uh, leaps of uh, progress here but what he did in, in the classroom in a safe environment, he took the hydrogen gas and put it in a cylinder. Then he took some oxygen and he put that inside the same cylinder. And he said, I'm going to make some water. So basically he wrote the chemical formula. He said, it's going to turn into H2O, but I need to add a little bit of heat. And this is symbol of a uh, heat and uh, like a Bunsen burner. And so he uh, he uh, lit a Bunsen burner and uh, and suddenly the cylinder exploded. And why did it explode? Because very rapidly oxygen uh, oxidized the hydrogen. And yeah, there was a maybe a drop or two of water that was generated. But as a result, there was a huge explosion. But again, the, the professor knew it and uh, did it in a safe environment where the explosion was maintained behind a um, behind a uh, visible wall. But he, he did it in a, in a safe manner and knowing what he was doing. Uh, but it really shook us. We're thinking suddenly he's going to shake the cylinder and there's going to be water coming out of it. But instead, the the oxidation process happens so rapidly. And, and the concept of combustion is that it is an oxidation process, an oxidation. And as a result of oxid something that's oxidizing in return is getting reduced. So redox reaction happening in a very rapid way it does cause explosion but also a combustion is this oxidation happening with the uh, carbon so just for your information and there with that uh, we conclude uh, this topic